German Shepherd in. His name's Max. As you can tell, he's barking. Um, he's got a lot of behavioral problems. Uh, doesn't know, doesn't have any basic stuff. So I'm going to just show you the process from start to finish. Uh, So earlier he was, uh, you know, grabbing at the gate to get to me. Um, when I walked back here to go to the bathroom, I saw him. Now, as you can tell, his demeanor's changed. Um, so in the beginning, barking because he's afraid, bark, 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 get away, get away, get away, where are you? And now, he's like, okay, now let's, let's go out and go somewhere. So as you can see, you got it, okay, okay. Very mouthy. Um, all right. Obviously, um, you know, not good on a leash. Uh, he doesn't really know what to do, but he's, he's got no formal training, so that's pretty normal. Another dog with zero engagement with the handler. Um, I, I want dogs to be a dog. I don't want them to, to like, come out and be militant and, and feel like they have to be, uh, they have to be right on me all the time. But as you can see with this dog, if I let the leash go, he's gone. Um, he has no engagement with me, has no engagement with anything but me actually so it's not good I want him to be looking from direction for me which is probably the, the main reason why he is the way he is super bad on leash pulls jumps barks um, grabs he's probably not good with other dogs because he doesn't know how to keep his composure he doesn't know how to stay cool he doesn't know how to do this stuff and a lot of times what happens is, is a dog presents himself the way that you guys saw when he was in the kennel and you just assume that he's aggressive um, and it is aggressive to some degree, but it's not, I'm gonna hurt you aggression. It's just, I'm gonna jump on you, I'm gonna mouth you, I'm gonna headbutt you. The first thing I'm gonna do is, because he's just nose to the ground, he's been in the kennel for a couple hours, I'm gonna throw him on the treadmill, or try to. Um, we have a dog treadmill inside. That's what I like to do with a dog that doesn't have any serious behavioral issues with humans, like he's not trying to kill me. Um, I'm gonna pop him on a treadmill, let him run for 20 minutes to, to, to 30 minutes on a slow pace just to get some of the jitters out. Then I'm going to work with them. It's very important that dogs get the physical exercise uh, in order to get the, the mental attention. So that's what we're going to do now. Pop him on the treadmill and get some energy out. So really I just start on a pace that they can't avoid. So he's got no choice but to walk. And it's very natural, obviously, for a dog to walk. It's unnatural for a dog to walk on a moving machine. So just give him a little bit, give him some encouragement, give him some food. Oh boy. Good. And this way, because of the weather, um, and the cold, and the salt, and all that stuff, pop him on a treadmill, let him run for like, thanks. Oh boy. Oh boy. If I just put some food at the end, make him work for it. Boy. So now we can run him at a pretty good pace for like as long as you want, but we usually start off uh, 20 minutes or so. Oh. So he just needs to get some of that, he really needs to get that clutter out. He's a dog with all this energy. As a German Shepherd, these dogs are supposed to be working and having a task and something to do, and he has nothing. He has no guidelines, no structure, nothing. So what I'm doing first is there's two types of, st of stimulation that a dog can, can put out. And so it's physical stimulation and mental stimulation, which means I'm going to give you all my attention here. 
and right now I'm making it physical. So I'm releasing all of that junk that's in his head and that's in his energy. Um, a lot of dogs don't go for an efficient walk. And rarely do people walk their dogs for a good amount of time to actually start taking away some of that built up stress or anxiety. And so that's what we're doing right here is just building them up, letting them run, and then we'll work on obedience because we know we'll have a clear mind. Alright guys, so this is the second portion of, we gave him some exercise on the treadmill and now we're going to bring him back to one of our training rooms and start the process of exactly how to stop the pulling on the leash, uh, calming the dog down, changing the overall behavior in general. A lot of people have obedience issues with their dogs and a lot of complaints about their dogs and it all comes from relationship. It's not my dog doesn't know how to sit, my dog doesn't know how to come when called, my dog jumps, my dog whatever. It's all about your relationship. If you can fix and manage your relationship, um, your overall dog relationship will get a lot better. So I'm going to show you from start to finish how to start the process after the physical exercise has been done. So, just like last time, um, as you can see, no engagement with me. There's a lot of stimulation in here, which is um, just the same stuff you saw outside. So what I want to do is really create a really, like, all of this is okay that he's sniffing and stuff like that, but when it comes down to, okay, it's time to listen, it just doesn't exist with this dog. So I really have to make sure that I can grab his attention and make him some sort of engaged with me so he knows that he's got to do certain tasks. And so, obviously, you can see he's not great on a leash. He's pulling. Um, he's kind of all over the place. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you guys from start to finish uh, exactly how to get the dog to be engaged with me, to listen, to be a little bit calmer on the leash, and that way we can do so much more in the future. So I'm going to start off with a slip collar, which um, looks like this. It's literally just a slip. Um, and on my channel, um, I have exact videos on how to, how to make one of these. So here it is, it's just a little slip. So I'm going to uh, put this on when I create a dog that knows that when we work, it's a fun thing. It should all be fun for him. All right, so we're just gonna do some back and forth stuff, some leash pressure stuff. Next couple. Now I have his attention. The dog. The dog 30 seconds ago and still is all over the place. What I'm going to start to do is reel that in. Hey buddy, I want your attention. I got something to say to you. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to do some stuff. That's what's going to make him a more stable dog. And so what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this for a little bit longer, just the back and forth stuff. Again, what I'm looking for is when I, when I go out and I turn and I say come, I want him to comply to me without getting the pop on the leash. So what it teaches them is something in the dog training world as we would call as operant conditioning, which means I'm giving him pressure and I'm correcting him for the bad behavior and I'm rewarding him for the good behavior. So when I turn and say come and he doesn't follow, he gets that physical pop on the end of the leash. And if he does follow, he gets that verbal praise and he doesn't get the pressure from the slip collar. So he's learning, okay, when he says come, I have to go that way. And so this is basic leash pressure stuff that'll really change your relationship with your dog almost immediately. So I'm gonna keep doing this and, I, and I'm hoping that his behavior and his overall engagement with me, the handler, will get better. So he's still kind of all over the place because it's a very exciting uh, area for a dog to be in. This is where a lot of training happens, but I'm starting to get the leash pressure to become a lot better. Max, come. 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 Good. Come. Good. So I switch it up a little bit. Good. Max, come. Good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the leash shorter. So he's got to be closer to me. Good. Good boy. Next sit. Good. 
good boy. So I'm starting to take him and get him closer and closer and closer to me. And this overall will help him make better decisions through me. So we're working as a team instead of this all over the place because a dog like that is not in a good state of mind. And I think the important thing here is, is I want him to do that when it's okay and when I tell him to. But when he's all over the place running around jumping and barking and screaming like he was, that's not a good state of mind for a dog. I want to change his state of mind by, by lessening the opportunity for him to make decisions because he, he's not a good decision maker. So I have to help him understand that the leash is my gatekeeping uh, access to tell him what he can and can't do. And then once he realizes, oh, this guy's going to take the wheel, then he's going to start acting like this. It's been probably three minutes of back and forth leash pressure. Um, dictating his movements before it happened, and you can tell he's already a lot calmer. I'm going to continue this just to show you guys uh, the full progression of the first session. Watch my leash pressure, guys. A couple little pops if he steps out of line, that's all. Watch my leash pressure right here. Good boy. Good job, Matt. Good. Good. Sit. Yes, good boy. Nice. So from before to after in real time, guys, this is, again, I'm going to keep presenting these videos to you so you can see different techniques and take different things away from them, but this is real stuff. You give a dog a little bit of structure and a little bit of pressure for not listening to that guidance that I'm trying to create for him, then you're going to get an immediate change in the dog's behavior. He's not shut down. Yes, he's stressed, but there's a lot of things that are stressful for, for dogs. There's, there's exciting things and there's great things that can be stressful for us too. He's only stressed, and he's not too stressed, but he is definitely a little stressed just because this is all new to him. He's never been told what he can and can't do, which is why he's here in the first place. But I want you guys to really, really take into consideration the difference in the dog's behavior 10 minutes ago versus right now. Huge difference. Very big difference in the dog's behavior. And I can promise you on my life, this is the first time I've ever touched this dog on a leash and, and actually worked with him. I'm going to continue. So you're going to come out. Heel. Pop. Good Heel. Good. Now let's see what he does here. Heel. Good boy. Good. Heel. Good. Heel. Good boy. Heel. Good boy, Max. Max, sit. Well done. Now that quick 45 second, 30 second segment was so big for you guys to see. He went out to the end of the leash. He got corrected for not paying attention and not following the leash when I went the other way. Break. And then he got that quick pop. After that, he said, well, I didn't really like that. And all I basically said on the leash, so I said, well, yeah, pay attention. And then I went back the other way and I said, heel, and he went right to me. And then I, I rewarded him, good heel, good boy. So again, perfect case of opera conditioning. Rewarding the behavior to keep it around that you want and correcting and giving pressure to the behaviors you want to eliminate. And that'll ultimately create a dog's state of mind so much better than where it was. And again, the important thing here, guys, is do this inside in a controlled environment. Don't try to do this outside where you can't control the environments. That's for advanced stuff. That's what you, maybe you'll do next week with the dog. But this is an immediate situation on how you can better your relationship with your dog. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Um, stay tuned for another video of him in the future, probably later this week. Like and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll talk to you guys next time.